Welcome to Meta Analysis for Hedgehogs. So, um, I will be moving to another flat, so you won't see that many videos of me in the next weeks. Um, yeah, but don't worry, I will be back. Um, yeah, today's topic is, um, I, I thought I would choose something that doesn't require too much preparation. So I will explain some terminology you should know if you are in that area of malware analysis. analysis. So in certain forums, in certain infosec communities, you will find different terms for different things. So um, a common term that's often been asked is the difference or, or what is the scan time crypto, what is the runtime crypto. Today, we will be looking at a scan time crypto. Uh, and actually, I don't like the term and I will explain to you why that is. Now, this is our sample. I chose a very simple one with not uh, that many options. And that's how it looks like. Like I said, very simple one. The purpose of this is you choose a file you can, if you want to, combine it with a second file and then create a resulting executable that's not detected by antivirus um, programs anymore. So these tools are commonly used by malware um, authors to make their files not detected anymore. And uh, they call this a scan time crypto. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is a language I don't understand. So I will look into Google Translate for the meaning of those buttons right here. Let's open this up in the inspire. Clean it up a bit. Okay, that's uh, the author calls this a crypto binder. And um, if we look into the project right here, we see the buttons and the button description. So go to Google Translate and uh, put these text um, parts in. It says the first button says combine. That's uh, no, that's the second part button actually. Uh, the first is this here. And Google Translate has an auto detect feature for the language and it says this is Turkish. So we have here select file and uh, combine in Turkish. And the last button down below is this one. Uh, that's create. And then there's the window title that I think is quite interesting. Okay, we know what Kaspersky means. Uh, but it says exploit, so Kaspersky exploit. I think, um, I suppose I somehow found out that Kaspersky is not detecting a certain file anymore after um, using this tool. Um, I don't know why it's called that way. Uh, yeah. And uh, the best thing we can do now is just test this. Um, let's choose um, cmd.exe. Calc.exe is a good one, I think, to test things with. Calc, calc, open. And uh, then we just combine this with Protex Analyzer, jar, and create this, the desktop. And I will just say crypted.exe. And uh, it says something that's probably successful. Here is the resulting file. And um, we will monitor this after execution. Uh, yeah. Now, set the filter to process name contains Java. Process name is calc.exe because uh, Java w.exe has been called to open Ponex Analyzer and calc.exe is the other program that we um, put into this tool. And then crypto.exe is the file, the resulting file that we will run. Um, then there's categories, right? So we see any right um, calls to that. Maybe we should also say um, operation is create process. 
is it here? Process K8, that is and okay. And now just run this file. And we can see here Java w.exe is being started and the filter is not correct, otherwise it would show something. So I guess that doesn't align with the category stuff. So remove it again. And uh, here is uh, the result. Uh, Crypted.exe is still running and uh, it's doing nothing. And also we see it has created two files in the temp folder. Let's see if they are still there. It's still here. And uh, those are the files that we binded with this tool. So it wrote these to the temp folder and executed them. They are already terminated. The program is still running though. Uh, that's a bug. And um, that is, if you are a malware analyst, it's actually not a packed file. You would expect this, like the term cryptor describes actually a packer that will um, put a file into a stub application and the stub application will decrypt the file and uh, run it in memory. Now, the thing is that this file does not create a packed file. It creates a malware dropper because this file here will decrypt the file that's, uh, that are um, attached to, to it, will write it to the temp folder and then execute them. So that's a malware dropper. If you are a malware analyst, that's nothing else, so uh, not a packed file. And um, that's why I say you shouldn't trust the terminology of malware authors, but uh, they will call this a scan time crypto because they, they, they say, uh, well, on scan time, if the files on disk are not being executed, it's not detected by antivirus products. But if you execute them, then the files are being dropped to disk and then they will be detected, of course. So that's um, why they call it this way. And um, let's take a look at the code a little bit. Here, right here. Uh, there are resources in here. One of those is the stub. The stub is this basic application that will do the execution of the files that are attached to it. So let's save it. You can say right click save stub. Save it here. And um, I would also like to see part that is doing the, um, that's appending. Oh, okay, here we have some AES encryption. So it's encrypting the files that are, it will be attaching to the stub. And all right. There it is. That's the uh, button three click. That's the create button. And that's what ha what's happening if you click it. Here we see a text, which is kind of weird. And you can see later on, this is used as a delimiter between those files. Now you can bind two files to one executable with this tool and, um, it will get the stub from the resources. It will write all bytes of the stub. Then it will append the delimiter. It will append this array here, which is the, um, which is part of the text box text. So it's the name of the executable of the first one. Then the delimiter again, then F that's the first file delimiter again, then in array two, and that's the text of the second text box. So it's the second file name and then delimiter and the second file, um, that's being put here. We can analyze this to see what's been done to it. Um, 
So that's the name of it, just the name. I know this is the name. F is the name and F2 is the name. And uh, this will somehow read. Ah, yeah, okay. It's taking the path from the text box, reading the, these bytes in, and then um, using, putting these bytes that it read, so the bytes of the file into an array. So these are the names of the file, and these in array things are the. Uh, why it doesn't apply any encryption, right? So it's just using these. No, the secure should do that. The secure is the one that does the encryption. Okay. Now I can, I can see it. And, uh, the, the encrypted bytes are put into base 64 string. So we should see, um, two large base 64 strings in the stub, in the, Final, not in that one, but in that one, right here. And we can easily see this in Podex Analyzer. If you uh, use the visualization, it's a bright blue in the byte plot. So this takes a while. Um, we may open this up in the hex editor first. Okay, it's already done. Fine. And uh, you see here, the blue array is the overlay. That's a stuff that's been appended to the stuff, to the original P file. And that's just what happened is they appended the base64 stuff right here, just at the end of the file. And find those stuff, this stuff again using this delimiter. So take a look into this. And just go by right to the end. There you can see this. That's the uh, um, name of the second executable. That's what we see here. This is F2. And right before that is the delimiter, this part. <laughs> okay, so here's the delimiter. And then is the large base64 string, which is the encrypted binary of uh, Portex Analyzer. So that's it. And uh, at some point there should also be calc.exe, so they know the original name of that uh, application before they... Ah, oh, yeah, here it is. So calc, and the delimiter before and the delimiter after that. Um, so I think they call this EOF, uh, cryptor because EOF stands for end of file. So it's actually in the overlay. Um, yeah. And that's the most important stuff I think you need to see. We should take a look at this step too. Uh, that's why we have it here. That's stop. Get this in. Here it is. And there you should see the part that's uh, decrypting the files in there and then executing them. So here's, uh, here's the decryption stuff that, that does a split. And the split has, look at the, the parameters here. First one is an expression. The second one is a delimiter. So, uh, that part here, that's a delimiter, but this time not as um, a string, but as a, well, conversions from uh, from these values here. Okay. And uh, then it's getting the bytes and then decrypting them. And here it writes the second file to temp here it writes the first file to temp. It's playing some system sounds while doing, after doing that, and then uh, starting the process. So that's already it. Not much magic. That's a malware dropper. Uh, that's it for today. And thanks for watching. Please put your questions below. And if you like it, subscribe.